cross. I want to I wanna just have you imagine something with me here for a minute. You're, uh, you're going to school. You signed up for this uh, really cool uh, p- program. You've, you've passed all the entrance exams and everything, and, and you're, you, they've come to you and they said, man, we, we, we believe in you. We, we are going to give you a full ride. We're going to give you a five-year ride to complete this super, super complicated doctoral thingamabob, and we're going to pay the whole way. But if you get one B, we take it all back. But if you misspell one word on any paper you turn in, we're taking it all back. But if you are late for class one time, we take it all back. And even if you make it through everything, on your first day at work, if you fool around for five seconds and and aren't like completely focused on what we've prepared you for, we take it all back. After you've been working 20 years, and you have that one job that doesn't go the way everybody hoped it would go, we take it all back. That is some people look at salvation in that way. You are saved by grace, but you got to work it out on your own. And if I screw up, I lose it all. It goes back as if it never, I, I go back to the place as if I was never saved at all. That is not the work of Christ on the cross. Jesus, as he hung on the cross... He said, it is finished. Here's something I wanted to say to you. This is actually the story of Job. What did Jesus, or what did God, we think it's, you know, I'm not sure whether it was Jesus or God, but it was the God of heavens and earth. It's talking to Satan. Why he's talking to Satan, I don't know. I know well, I know because he doesn't, he's not worried about him. He doesn't run in fear of him because he's a created being. But he says to him, what does he say about Job? He said, hey, the, the Lord, um, let me find it, Job 1.8. My computer printed my notes in a really weird set. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on earth, a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away from evil. What does that sound like to you? What did God think of Job? This is pre-Jesus. This is pre-Holy Spirit. This is God talking about Job. Hey, have you checked out Job? I like him. He, he follows me. He's committed his life to me. What in the book of Hebrews, in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, in the Faith Hall of Fame, how many Old Testament guys do we hear about there? And remember, that's pre-Jesus. That's pre-Holy Spirit. What did, Jesus, what did God think of those people? What did Jesus think of those people? I count it, to, I count it as righteousness for their faithfulness. I, they, they, they were, they were, they, he liked them. And guess what? They weren't the only ones that he liked. God liked you before you accepted Jesus. Or else he wouldn't have offered you Jesus. Oh oh man, I feel so sorry for all these people. I don't really like them. But I guess if I clean them up and repaint them and rebuild them and redo them and give them better personalities, maybe I could grow to like them. While we were yet sinners... We were enemies of God. He loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him shall be saved and have eternal life. That is the work of the cross. And then finally, what I I was going to for before is John 19. Uh, John 8, 36 says, uh, if the son makes us free, we are free indeed. How, how free are we if he makes us free? <laughs> a totality. It's, it's all. We're completely free. John 19, 30 says, Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. I looked this up and I, I kind of did the whole Greek thing. And, and uh, you know, it is finished means it is a completed work. It wasn't Jesus saying, Okay, I finished my part. Now you do your part. So no, I've actually finished it. Now imagine that that same opportunity is available to you, the same scholarship is available to you, the same career path is available to you, only this time they say, now look, we know that you're going to mess up every once in a while, and that's okay. We still believe in you. Your first test comes back and you got a C instead of an A, and you go and you go, oh man, I just really screwed up. And they go, that's no problem. We actually knew you were going to struggle with this. That's the reason we, we've got a tutor for you that's going to help you get through this. 
And then you make it to the next round and, and you struggle with some practicum things. And they say, that's, that's no problem. Because we actually, we knew you were going to struggle with that. We've given you somebody who can walk alongside you and help you in your lab work. And then you graduate and you're working and, and you, you struggle and you go, man, this job is too big for me. And he goes, that's not, not a problem. We knew that was going to happen. So we sent somebody, we sent you some coworkers that are going to make it where you can be successful. God wants you and I to be successful. He doesn't want us to be failures. He wants us to be successful. He also is willing to let us struggle so we can enjoy success. You know anybody who's never had to struggle for anything? What do they think about success? They just don't. They don't value it. Anybody here ever work really hard for something and go, man, I value that because I know what it costs. See, he's a good father. I want my kids to know what it's like to struggle so that they know that they can succeed. God the Father is the same way. He loves us. So here's the message. Jesus totally paid your bill. And he sent the Holy Spirit, to live inside you so that you could live it out. Now, I know we talk about sloppy grace. Sloppy grace means you can do anything you want to do once you're saved. I don't believe in that. But I believe if you're truly saved, God changes your want to. And it gets to the point where your want to lines up more and more with Jesus' want to every day. And the thing that you did yesterday, and after it was all over, you go, yeah, you know, I just that was not... That was not what Jesus wanted me to do. And he goes, yeah, I knew you were going to do that. Um, I knew that 2,000 years ago when I was hanging on a cross. I actually knew that 10,000 years ago when I was building the earth. I was thinking about you. I was walking through this Middle Tennessee area, and I was kind of creating this in my head, what it was going to look like. And, and uh, I saw you doing that, and I thought, you know, I still love him. I still love her. Nothing you do catches God off guard. He's already experienced this on the cross. And he loves you. So now, instead of me working out of fear that if the first time I goof up, I'm going to lose my scholarship, I'm going to have to pay it all back. Now what am I living out of? These people like me. These people paid for me to do something that I could not have done on my own, and they are supporting me. And they've put things in my path to help me succeed. They want me to succeed. Now all of a sudden I'm living, if I can transfer that over to my spiritual life, I am living in a totally different way because now I'm not living out of obligation. I'm not living out of duty. I'm not living out of fear. I'm living out of, and have you met my dad? My dad loves me. My dad loves me. My dad is extravagant with his love for me. He doesn't just eke it out. Well, okay, how much, how much do you need? You need $10? Okay, I'm only going to give you nine. Make it, make it last. You need $10? Oh, here's a, here's a hundred. That's how much God loves us. Totality. So this morning, you're going to leave here. You can grab some extra glasses if you want. We're going to take them out. We're going to do our treasure hunt. For those of you who don't know what a treasure hunt is, I'll say this really quickly. I notice I'm saying everything really quickly, but that's good. Um, our kids have been praying for clues. And a clue may be a person wearing a red shirt, or a clue may be um, a person's name or whatever. And in a little while, we're going to eat some lunch, and then we're just going to kind of wander around. And if one of the girls who prayed that, look for a red shirt and going to go up and say, hey, is your name? And the guy's going to go, how'd you know that? Well, because God was talking to me about you and wants me to pray for you. And that person's going to have one of two reactions. You're nuts. Or, man, just this morning I was asking God to show me if he was real. That's what we've had happen. We've had people go, how did you know that I needed you to pray for me today? <laughs> I never will forget that time I went in to pray for a guy and he goes, why are you, why'd you come in here? And don't tell me God sent you. It's like, then I got nothing because that's, that's the only excuse I have. Guess what you can do? You can ask the Lord, God, what do you want me to do today? Who do I say yes to? I want to say yes to you. So what am I looking for today? And God may go, God may put a coworker in your head and go, you know, that person, they just need somebody to encourage them today. Well, you know, I don't, I, I'm kind of afraid. You're afraid to go encourage somebody? Hey, look, is there anything I can do for you today? No? Okay, well, thanks. 
Or it may go, hey, is everything okay? Uh, no, actually, I'm struggling with this. Oh, man, can I pray for you about that? Can I do something for you about that? What are we doing with the love of Christ? We're taking it out of our wallet and we're going, here. Here's some of the love of Christ. that uh, It's mine, but I'm giving it to you. The good news is then when you look in your wallet, it's like, wow, it's just as full as it was before. Because the love of Christ is like that. My encouragement to you today is that live with the idea of totality. Live with the idea of totality. Let it soak in that God loves you. He is well pleased. You don't have to wait until you walk through the gates of heaven for him to go, Wes, well done, good and faithful servant. He thinks that now. He's saying that now. The reason I brought up Job, Job, Job had, what was God saying? Hey, hey, Satan, here's my servant who I am well pleased with. He's well pleased with you now. And we get to live up to that. We don't have to live out of fear. We don't have to live out of dread. We don't have to live out of some, some weird allegiance. We're living out of love. So we're going to have a time of prayer here, and I know that there are several people who have already asked about prayer. So if you want to meet with Sally and I this morning for, uh, for prayer, I'm just going to ask you to meet over there under the cross. We've got other people who are going to be praying, um, but, uh, but I know that there are some specific people who needed prayer this morning. And I just want to say, Father God, I know that, I know that every person who's here this morning, you have something to say to them. Anything that I've said that wasn't from you, just strike it from their memory. Anything, Father, that is from you, I pray that you would amplify it, that you would, that you would make it resound in their heads and in their hearts today, that they would know that this is a message from the Lord. God, I know that you love me with an unconditional, amazing, extravagant love. I pray, Father, that I would live every day with that assurance because it gives me the ability then to go out and accomplish everything you've asked me to accomplish. I'm not doing it in my power. I'm not doing it in my righteousness. I'm not doing it in my strength. I'm doing it in the strength and righteousness and power of Jesus Christ. That is the offer for all of us. God, I pray that we would stop living out of a lack and start living out of an abundance because Your kingdom is more important than anything else. You are more important than anything else. And that's okay because you love us. We can put you first because you've given your son for us. Bless us as we go into a time of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.